Every quarter, all of the super investors like Warren Buffett and Ray Dalio file their 13 Fs, which allow us, the public, to view what they're buying and selling. In this video, we are going to go over the top three stocks that super investors are buying in the second quarter of 2022 and dive into these stocks' fundamentals and try to understand why these super investors, well, might be buying them. And right here, I have a screenshot of the top three stocks that super investors have been buying. And we can see that the number one stock is Meta. The second stock is Google or Alphabet. And the third stock is Amazon. So it does look like super investors have been using the correction in the overall S&P 500 to load up on some more tech stocks. So right here, we're taking a look at Meta platforms. And the first thing that I want to do is just show you guys how far Meta has fallen, okay? So back here in 2021, in September of 2021, Meta was a $382 stock, okay? And then all the way down to its pit, it fell about 58%. So Meta stock has been absolutely destroyed in the market over the past year. And it looks like super investors are taking this absolute crash in Meta's share price to load up on it and it's the number one most bought stock that super investors are buying. Now, if we head over to Meta's financials here and we take a look at the trailing 12 months revenue that this company has been generating, we can see that the revenue is basically topping off. It's actually come down slightly quarter over quarter in the trailing 12 months, but we can see that the revenue growth for Meta is it's dropping significantly and it's really slowing down. If we head over to the cash flow statement, this is the exact same story with Meta's operating cash flow in the trailing 12 months. And if we scroll down to the bottom, the exact same story to the free cash flow. And in the most recent quarter, free cash flow has been dropping. Now, if we head back over to Meta's income statement and we take a look at the total operating expenses, we can see that the operating expenses are just rallying higher and higher and higher, and they're sitting at an all-time high right now. If we take a look at the yearly operating expenses and show the percent change, we can see that from 2020 to 2021, Meta's operating expenses increased by about 32.6% or 33% if we want to round up. So Meta's revenue growth looks like it is really starting to slow down. Its expenses are increasing right now and its cash flow is dropping, which could be partly why, you know, the stock price is down about 56%. Now, really quickly, before we move on through Meta, I want to let you guys know that Stock Unlock now has a referral program where you can invite your friend and you can both get a free month of Stock Unlock. I also have a referral link at the top of the description for this video for anyone who would like a free 30 days to stock unlock with no credit card required. On Stock Unlock, you will get access to my own personal watch list, insights on the fundamentals of over 100,000 stocks, 20 years of historical financial data, education mode, which helps you learn the fundamentals of investing, the freeform tool, which allows you to easily compare any number of stocks, analyst projections and recommendations, insider buying and selling, and our easy to use discounted cash flow calculator. We're also building out portfolio tracking right now and a dividend tracker or a dividend tab for every stock that pays dividends. So there is a lot going on with stock unlock and using the 30 day free trial or the, the, the referral link in my description, Again, you guys can come and get a 30 day free trial to this platform and it's only getting better over time. Yeah, it's great. So use that link in my description and now let's get back to the meta video. So meta's revenue and its, its profitability essentially is dropping and its operating expenses are skyrocketing. This is because meta is investing in virtual reality and the metaverse. Mark Zuckerberg has basically said that, you know, meta's focus and Facebook's focus now is to develop the metaverse and virtual reality. They even went as far as changing the, the name of the company from Facebook to Meta. That is how all in they are. Now, what's interesting about this, though, is that Meta's Reality Labs revenue, which is like their metaverse revenue, is growing quite substantially. It grew by 50% year over year in the second quarter, and the trailing 12 months revenue for Reality Labs is growing very strong. So far, this area of the business does look like it is growing and expanding quite quickly. But in my opinion, it does still have a very, very long way to go. Now, what's also interesting is I went over to Google Trends and I searched up Oculus because I wanted to see, you know, what is the trend for Oculus over time? The, the trend of Oculus on Google is growing and it's growing exponentially. So every single year, there are more and more people searching for Oculus and it looks like Oculus is really growing and expanding. And that is also backed up by Facebook's revenue numbers that we saw earlier. Then I went over to um, Amazon here and I just wanted to take a look at Oculus and Meta's Quest, which is their virtual reality headset. 
And we can see that Meta has 44,000, over 44,000 reviews on Amazon. And these are very strong reviews. So it looks like people are happy with the Oculus product and the Meta Quest. And um, yeah, it's just a very highly reviewed product. Now, what's also interesting is the app downloads for July 2022. We can see here that Instagram was the most downloaded app on the App Store. Next was TikTok, then Facebook, then WhatsApp, then Snapchat, then Facebook Messenger. But again, the number one downloaded app was Instagram, and it had more downloads than TikTok. This is important because a lot of people are saying that TikTok is going to destroy Meta's business essentially, and that TikTok is taking Meta's users. Well, I don't know about that because again, Instagram and these other Meta apps, their family of apps, are seeing much more downloads than TikTok. What's also interesting is that Instagram's interest over time on Google Trends is basically sitting at an all-time high right now. It's sitting at 100. Then I also took a look at the Reels trend. Instagram Reels is Instagram and Meta's way of directly competing with TikTok. And you guys can see right here that Instagram Reels trends on Google Trends is basically absolutely exploding. And it is sitting at an all-time high right now, and it's seeing a massive spike currently, especially in this past month, because again, we saw that Instagram was the most downloaded app in July. So it looks like Instagram and Instagram Reels is really working well. It's seeing a lot of interest around the world. And it looks like Meta's overall users are still continuing to grow around the world. So what I am seeing here is that Meta is still growing its user base, and I believe that it will continue to grow over the long term. I think that there are a lot of tailwinds behind Meta's business. And personally, I do think that virtual reality is the future. So I am happy to see that Meta is investing in this technology early and, and basically getting market share very, very early. Now, also, if we head over here to Stock Unlocks Freeform Tool, and we go and take a look at Meta's enterprise value to free cash flow, we can see that it's basically sitting at an all-time low right now of about 12, basically 12 exactly. This is a very low enterprise value to free cash flow, especially for a business that is investing tens of billion dollars into, sorry, into capital expenditures and really lowering its cash flow. If we take a look at the enterprise value to operating cash flow, it's all the way down at 7.3 right now. I think that this is very cheap for a business with so many long-term tailwinds. It's just a global player in the um, in the internet advertising and virtual reality space. Getting this for an enterprise value of 7.3, I personally think is a long-term steal. Meta is in my own personal portfolio, so I definitely see why super investors are buying the dip on Meta and buying the 60% crash that the stock is currently in. To me, it looks cheap. I agree with the super investors on this one, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. But now let's move on to the second stock that super investors have been buying in the second quarter, and this one is Google or Alphabet. We can see here that Google topped out at about $150 a share in 2021, late 2021, and then down to the pit here, Google had a 30% correction in the second quarter. So it looks like super investors were using this 30% correction in Google's share price to load up on shares and basically, you know, buy the dip. So now let's go and take a look at Google in our freeform tool here really quickly. And I want to show you guys Google's price to free cash flow. And let's zoom out all the way to 2012. And right here, we can see that Google's 10 year historical average price to free cash flow has been about 28.25. Right now, Google's price to free cash flow is about 24, but at the at the pit of the correction that Google saw, its price to free cash flow was about 20.5, which is well below its 10 year historical averages. Basically, when I take a look at how Google has been trading historically, it does look like it is still cheap right now. And when it was down in that 30% correction, it was looking very cheap. A 20 price to free cash flow for a company as strong as Google, I think, for a long-term investor is an absolute steal. And it looks like a lot of the super investors also agreed. What's also interesting about Google is let's go and take a look at the operating cash flow margin and let's go and take a look at the free cash flow margin. What's interesting here is that the operating cash flow margin really has been staying consistent around this 33% range basically for like the past decade. But what's interesting is the free cash flow margin is much more volatile. So what this means or what this suggests to me as an investor is that Google's operations are basically staying at the same profitability level, again, around that 30 to 35%. But since the free cash flow margin is bouncing around everywhere, this tells me that Google goes through periods of higher CapEx or capital expenditures, which lowers the company's free cash flow 
because essentially the business goes through times where it is investing more money into growth. We can see right here that over really the past about six months or the past three quarters, Google's free cash flow margin has been declining. And this is because the company is investing in a lot of capital expenditures and they're investing billions of dollars into their cloud infrastructure. So the overall free cash flow for this business is dropping right now. But when you take a look at the operating cash flow margin, it does look like the operations are still as profitable as ever. Now, I have some screenshots right here that I took of just some updates with Google because I am an investor in this business as well, and I like to stay up to date with what the company is doing. So right here on August 9th, Google announced that it is entering in new regions in the Asia Pacific region of the planet. Then I dug deeper into this article and this says, in fact, IDC expects the total spending on cloud services in Asia Pacific, excluding Japan, will reach 282 billion US dollars by 2025. To meet the growing demand for cloud services in Asia Pacific, we are excited to announce our plans to bring three new Google Cloud regions to Malaysia, Thailand, and New Zealand. On top of six other regions we previously announced are coming to Berlin, Damam, Doha, Mexico, Tel Aviv, and Turin. Basically what Google is saying here is that the cloud or the overall cloud is projected to see massive growth over the next few years in the Asia Pacific region, and they are just expanding their access and their their depth in the Asia Pacific region with Google Cloud. And again, this is costing the company billions of dollars in CapEx right now to benefit from all of this long term growth. Now, personally, why I love to see this, like absolutely love to see this, is because the global cloud computing market is expected to witness a compounded annual growth rate of 15.7% from 2022 to 2023 and reach about 1.555 billion US dollars by 2030, which is essentially 1.6 trillion if we want to round up. This is a massive and exploding market that Google is, is spending tons of money on expanding into and really becoming a leader of. What we can also see is that Google Cloud's revenue has grown by about 5x over just the past five years. In 2017, Google Cloud produced about $4 billion in revenue, and in 2021, it was nearly 20 billion. This is absolutely ridiculous growth, and I think that this growth is only going to continue over the next decade and really over the next few decades as the overall global cloud infrastructure continues being developed. Now, what's also interesting is about since the second quarter of 2020, Google Cloud's market share of the overall cloud has been expanding. In the second quarter of 2020, they were sitting at about 6% of the global cloud market. And today they're sitting at about 9%. This also means that if the cloud is projected to be worth about 1.6 trillion by 2030, and Google can maintain about 10% market share of the cloud, then they will be generating about $160 billion in revenue just from Google Cloud by 2030, which is absolutely ridiculous. That's almost 10x how much the company generated in 2021. Now, on top of Google Cloud, Google is also a market leader in AI. And honestly, Google's AI is like next level. They are, it's just insane. So check this out. On July 28th of 2022, AlphaFold released the structure of the protein universe. AlphaFold is owned by DeepMind and DeepMind is owned by Google. Okay, honestly, it was kind of hard for me to understand what AlphaFold was because I'm not like a scientist or anything like that. But check this out right here. This says today's update means that most pages on the main protein database, Uniprot, will come with a predicted structure. All 200 plus million structures will also be available for bulk download via Google Cloud public data sets. Then further down here, this underlined section reads, AlphaFold is the singular and momentous advance in life science that demonstrates the power of AI. Determining the 3D structure of a protein used to take many months or years. It now takes seconds. Think about that. Trying to find the structure of a protein used to take months, if not years, and now with AlphaFold and this new Google technology, this AI technology, it now just takes seconds. This is an absolutely massive advancement in um, science in general and bioscience and artificial technology. Google is essentially at the forefront of AI technology and they have some of the strongest AI on the planet. They're growing the Google Cloud. The underlying advertising business is growing double digit growth rates. And all of this was selling for a 20 price to free cash flow in the second quarter of 2022. So I definitely see why super investors were buying Google. And I think that this was a great buy, honestly. I think that Google is a long-term no-brainer for a long-term investor. And at a 20 price to free cash flow, I think you're getting a lot of that future growth for almost free. So 
Again, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below, but that's kind of just my opinion. Let's move on to the third and final stock that super investors were buying in the second quarter. And this one is Amazon. So let's just do the exact same thing. And we can see here that Amazon topped out at about $186 a share in 2021. And then at the pit here, it fell about 45%. So Amazon was also decimated in the market. And in the second quarter, it looks like super investors were using this 45% crash to increase their position in Amazon and buy more of it. Now, Amazon is benefiting from the same tailwinds as Google, like the overall cloud. And Amazon is actually the global leader in the cloud market. They own about 33% of the cloud market. It is absolutely insane. And AWS is growing at double digit growth rates of over 30% while still producing about $80 billion in annualized revenue. It's an absolute beast of a business and um, AWS is honestly just amazing. But what's also interesting is that it's not just AWS that is seeing growth to Amazon. I found this tweet right here, and this says that Amazon's third party seller services grew by 13% year over year, subscription services grew by 14%, ad services grew by 21% and AWS grew by about 33%. So again, it's not just AWS that is seeing growth for Amazon, but other areas of the business are seeing significant double digit growth rates at the same time as everyone is worried about a recession and a, you know, an economy, a global economy that is starting to get weaker. So now let's head over to our free form tool right here. And I want to show you guys some interesting things because if we go and take a look at Amazon's operating cash flow, we can see that it was growing really, really strong for like a decade. And then it topped out here in the first quarter of 2021 at $67.2 billion. But then it fell off a freaking cliff. And now in the trailing 12 months, it's about $36 billion if we went around up. So Amazon's operating cash flow and its overall profitability is really being harmed right now. And this is because Amazon took the brunt of inflation and the increased costs. They didn't want to increase all of their costs onto their merchants and onto their customers. So they took on all of the costs. It really hurt the company's margins. And now it looks like the company is starting to regain those margins and the company is focusing on efficiency and profitability once again. If we take a look at Amazon's operating cash flow margin right here, we can see that it topped out at about 17% in 2020, and now it's all the way down to 7%. So you can see that their margins are really being compressed right now. And why this is so interesting to me is because here on my channel, I have previously said that the market tends to value Amazon based on its operating cash flow. For example, right here, we're taking a look at Amazon's 10 year historical price to operating cash flow. And what I noticed is that every single time Amazon gets down to a 20 price to operating cash flow, the market just buys it up. That seems to be where the bottom of the stock has historically been over the past decade. I'll draw a line right here on the video so that you guys can all see that Amazon basically bottoms out at a 20 price to operating cash flow. Since Amazon's operating cash flow is declining right now, and since its operating cash flow margins are going down, it means that this is happening. The price to operating cash flow is skyrocketing. It's now sitting at about 40.7. So if you're taking a look at the operating cash flow or the sorry, the price to operating cash flow right now, you may be thinking that, hey, this stock looks really expensive, even though it was down like 40%. Why are super investors buying it? Well, let me show you. Let's go back to Amazon's operating cash flow margin. Sorry, operating cash flow margin right here. And we can see that it topped out at 17%. Now, remember, the company is refocusing on profitability and regaining these margins. And I think that with the growth of AWS and as AWS continues making up more of Amazon's business, they are going to be able to regain these margins and continue growing the margins over the long term. Okay, so that's my investment thesis. So basically, I think the operating cash flow margin is going to get back to 17% and then grow beyond 17% in the future. So now let's go to Amazon's revenue right here. And we can see that in the trailing 12 months, it was about $486 billion. So let's pull out our calculator and go 486 billion times 0.17, which is a 17% operating cash flow margin. And this tells me that if Amazon had its 17% operating cash flow margin still, then it would have produced about $82.6 billion in operating cash flow. Now, remember, the market historically has valued Amazon the lowest at um, a 20 price to operating cash flow, right? So let's multiply this operating cash flow right here by 20, and we get a market cap of about $1.652 trillion, okay? $1.65 trillion. Now, if we go to Amazon's market cap here on our freeform tool, it's sitting at about 
1.49 or about 1.45 trillion dollars, okay? So if we go 1450 divided by 82.6 billion dollars in operating cash flow, if their margins were still maintained, then we get a price to operating cash flow of about 17.6, which is lower than Amazon has traded over the past decade, even on its lows. So basically what this means is that if Amazon can regain its historical profitability and regain its historical margins, then right now on its revenue today, it looks cheap again, if it can get that operating cash flow back. I believe that Amazon will. I think the company is only going to continue getting more efficient as time progresses. I think that super investors agree with me. And if you're focused on the long term, once Amazon gets through this period where margins are compressed, then honestly, it looks cheap for the long term. And um, I think that this company is just going to continue growing and being a beast over the long term. So that's why I think super investors are buying Amazon. And I was also buying Amazon in that 40% correction. I thought that the stock looked cheap. I think that it's got a lot of runway for future growth. And I think that the, the things affecting Amazon right now are short term headwinds that are going to go away in like the next five years. So those are the three stocks that super investors have been buying. Um, I wanted to go into a little bit more depth and really explain my thesis and my research on these businesses because I own all three of them in my own portfolio. And I kind of just want to let you guys know what I see in these businesses. If you guys enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like on it. It really helps out the channel and I really appreciate it. And if you want to see more stock market related content like this, then please consider subscribing to the channel as well. Also, if you want that 30 day free trial to stock unlock, make sure you hit that referral link at the top of my description. This is honestly a fantastic deal, you guys. You get 30 days free on the platform. You don't even need to put in a credit card, just put in your email and you get access to everything stock unlock has to offer. You know what, over the next 30 days, we may even release our portfolio feature. So over the next 30 days, you're gonna see um, advancements in this platform and improvements to the platform because we're literally improving it every single day. So you guys are gonna see it progress over the next 30 days as well. So get your free trial. Hit that link and uh, let me know what you guys think about stock unlock. But that's going to wrap up the video, everyone. So thank you so much for watching. As always, I truly do appreciate it. And I really hope to see you all again in my next video.